This is Gordon Pepper, and welcome to UBA's Battle Finals. And as you can tell, we've been doing this for four straight days, and therefore my voice sounds like I've eaten a lot of gravel. <laughs> I am joined by Malachi Moore, who has not been eating out of any gravel, I hope. Hello, Malachi. How you doing, Gordon? How you doing today? I am doing good. I am doing good. Hey, my voice is back now. Yes. And today we have an outstanding matchup between Outrage and G-Town. It's going to be a very tough matchup. This is uh, G-Town's first time ever making it to the final, let alone to the final eight. They've made their way up. They went through some tough teams. Their last matchup was against the, the, the uh, champions of last year, Murder, Inc. This year, they're going up against a tough team who's been here before against Outrage. And the question will be, who's going to win it all? Oh, before we go with that, I know you got the oh. Let's do the line of punishments, please. Say that one more time. Let's do the announcements, sir. Let's do the lineups. Malachi, please. Okay. Start with Outrage. Begin with Outrage. On the scratch pair, they have Mr. Brian Bennett, Mr. Richard Jerome Jr., and Mr. Hugh Mc McGainey Jr. Outstanding team for G-Town heavy hitters. You have Matthew Martin, Mr. Brandon Haney, and Jack Ness. Also two, four outstand, uh, three outstanding bowlers. For Outrage, first team handicap, you have Brian Cavey, Calvin Thomas III, and Eric Wallace. On G-Town, you have Mr. Michael Shook, Kevin Head, Jonathan Bowling. We have to compete against uh, uh, announcements. For the, for the second team handicap for Outrage, we have Samantha Ashley, Ray Schmarsh, Jason Howard. For G-Town heavy hitters, you have Tracy Bolin, Ethan Griffin, and last but not least, Mr. James Hahn. He said the game here. Oh, we have, and, and again, we have. All right, hold on one second. I've got to go do some UBA work here. Hey, while we're doing that, what's the keys to the match? To me, the key of the match today would be how G-Town performed on the first team handicap against uh, Murder, Inc. They, they destroyed Murder, Inc. Now, of course, the team would be suffering, but the question would be, can they keep up the good work that they did against Murder, Inc. in terms of their overall performance? From a statistical standpoint, Also on lane 41 and 42, we have Kyle Brooks and Wayne Thor. We have Kyle Brooks and Wayne Thor on lane 41 and 42. From a statistical standpoint, we have Christian Clemens and Felicity we have 18 more leagues left to go. Meanwhile, I hope that you can hear us over all the other noise as I That's true. Including my voice. All right, so to me, the match will be won on the first scene handicap from G-Town versus uh, the more experienced. G-Town's handicap, 2,300 plus. Yes. That was the biggest total so far out of everybody. I mean, everybody in this tournament. That's what you have to be looking at right now at this moment. Exactly. And they have nothing to lose. This is their first time in the championship, let alone the playoffs. And if they if, if they stay close with G-Town, it's going to be make a world of a difference to see who can actually perform at the end. Today is going to be about pressure and can you actually uh, have a last from bowling all this weekend, the, the psychological aspect of the game. Can you remain focused? Yeah, both teams with a very big start in the semifinals yesterday. 
Two jumping out to lead. It's outrage and over 300. Same with Kate Town. That is correct. So the, the question, who do you, in your in your estimation, who do you think is going to win the match? The team that figures it out better, the team with the better carry. <laughs> I mean, really, you're flipping the coin here. Outreach is supposed to be the favorites. That's all well and good. However, and a big however here, uh, G-Town, if they bowled yesterday, G-Town wins, and they win in a rout. Exactly. So I don't, this is going to be amazing. I'm looking at energy. G-Town is not as they're not uh, they're chanting self. I think that they're thinking about it too much. They've already started off on the scratch pair with two different. Uh, they have a foul to 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 begin the game, and then the second one they uh, had missed the ten pin. So it's going to be interesting to see how they how they recover from that. On the other pair, outrage way A, B, and C, uh, and you got to have the names in there. Town heavy hitters, D, E, and F. Correct. So Mr. James Hahn already met, they already had a split in the first frame, but his two teammates are picking it up with two strikes in a row. So it's going to be on each pair. I'm looking to see where where you're going to where uh, G Town will stand to have an advantage. If they don't come in here and start uh, squeezing, well, I, I agree with you. That key is going to be that first handicap here. Right. The difference on a handicap is twenty. In a playoff match, you want to well, be. The good in thing it. is that there's only 62 lanes. We're only going to be interrupted four more times. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, you can see over here, Outrage on lane 13 and 14, a wall of strikes. Nothing but strikes in the first two. Outrage needs to jump on G-Town from the very beginning. If they don't, they're going to they're gonna make a team believe that they can win. That's, the, that's a dangerous team. Well, it's going to be, once again, Scratch on Outrage versus Handicap on G-Town. In, in the finals, you, want, you don't want to think about Handicap. You just want to try to beat the other team, Scratch, if you can. Oh, let's see what we have it over here. What are the different? Actually, we got to look up here, don't we? Once the handicaps are in, we will say exactly what those differences are. Okay, on lanes 55 and 56, I have Darnell Bell and Maurice Lee. On the first team on handicap, they get 29 pins. On the second Bell team Maurice handicap, Lee. they get 27. On lanes 57 and 58, I have Nate Colding and Tina Colding. On lanes 57 and 58, I have Nate Colding and Tina Colding. You know, it's interesting. I would think that the pressure, I think that the pressure so far would be on outrage. On out, uh, well, no, on G Town, but it's outrage that's making mistakes early, especially in the handicap pair. Well, see, I would, I would tend to believe that because G Town, this is their first time being here. Nobody even expected them to be here, so they have absolutely nothing to lose. So in my opinion, I would expect them to just to bowl freely and get that energy up. Right now, the energy is not where it, where it was yesterday. If they get their energy up, to me, they're going, they may end up steamrolling uh, outrage. And that's something oh, I, I don't say. see that happening at all. Scratch is going exactly what it looked like yesterday. Nothing but strikes so far. Of course, now that I say but, that, we don't have one. But nothing is but strikes yesterday, before we, for outrage. Remember yesterday, uh, outrage what won against against X wounds but only by 72 pins on the Outrage scratch beat murder inc big murder inc i'm sorry by they won by 72 pins that's not saying a lot being as though uh murder inc didn't bowl as good as they they want to so well, no outrage won the first game yesterday on the wood by combined 263 pins but what about for, for the whole for the whole match for the whole match they won by close to 500. okay but if you do oh, i'm sorry i did a comparative analysis if you did a comparison analysis, what yeah, they but did yesterday. the lanes are conditioned. You can't really. Uh, well, do I mean, a it just shows analysis. the different pressure. That's all. All right, and right now you look at that pressure. You got an open from T Town. That's true. However, they are building up a lead on the second team handicap. Right you guys will actually move to lane 61 and 62. Lane 61 well, I thought we we're only going to have four interruptions. We have more than four. All right, well, in the words of Phil Chance, the UBA, the show must go on. 
So talk to me a little bit about Scratch because that one's looking pretty close. Well, let's see here. Remember I mentioned we, we both talked about how pressure burst pipes. It's early on. Both teams are pretty much throwing strikes. You only have really one, one miss with a 10 pin by uh, Mr. Jack Ness. And he, he's, he's righted the ship. He's thrown strikes since then. So now it's just going to be a matter of who can consistently throw strikes going back and forth. Oh, we've seen both teams can do that. Both of them. That's Handicap true. number one right now, it looks like G-Town looking to have around a 30-pin lead. And that's what we're getting. First Jonathan Bolin, a.k.a. Lee Bolin, three-bagger. You have one, two, two outrageous right now with the front three, and five G-Towners front three. That's right. It's early on in the, in the in a championship match. In a championship match, starting out, you're going to have a lot of lot of uh, butterflies because it's it's the big stage. Now it's going to be a matter of who can finish it out. Very true. Very true. Martin, right now, G Town. There's front four, and again, you're looking at this from a scratch standpoint. This is going to be carry versus no carry. <laughs> really, that's what it's going to be. But spares win games. Would you agree? Uh, maybe not today. Today, I think it's going to end up being that way. Not for the scratch pair, but for the handicap pairs. As the match goes on, I think fatigue will end up coming into play, being as though all the, all the bowlers have been bowling all weekend, and they've been out late because they've been in, in bigger, bigger matches. Outrage won the, the brawl, and now they're, they're in the championship matchup. That's a lot of bowling. That's a lot of concentrating. That is true. Outrage again for winning the brawl yesterday. Uh, World Champions is series. Keep that in mind. You had three members of G-Town in that yesterday as well. That's true, but that's, that's see how, how it all is going to affect them today. Cheatham right here, only three non-strikes. <laughs> only three non-strikes over by G-Town. And they're starting to build a league. Look over there at the difference in terms of handicap one. G-Town starting to board on early. Talk to me about that. That's true. The question is, can they maintain it? When you're already getting a lot of handicap from the very beginning, and, and, and a team, that means that leaves less room for error for outrage to make mistakes. And it's even worse when the other team is throwing strikes. That is correct. Question now is, will, out, will uh, outrage be able to recover on the first team handicap? They're already down almost 60 pins already. And G-Town's well, anchor man is Jonathan. Also. Exactly. So that means that, once again, when I mentioned to you before about it's not what just one pair does because it looks like here uh, G-Town's team is starting to right the ship on, on, on the uh, scratch pair. So they're not that far down. And when their two handicapped pairs are already de definitively open up a lead on, the, on Outrage's handicapped pair, that's going to be definitive. It leaves neither one of those teams, Outrage aspect, can make a mistake and expect to win this matchup. I think, I'm looking at an upset today. Could be, could be. Talk to over here on third handicap. Second handicap pair. What's going on over there? Okay, over here on the on the handicap pair uh, on the second team handicap looks like uh, G Town has opened up. They have three in a row on the for the well first first second guy Ethan is working on a 300 pace right now. Mr. James Hahn is actually he he had a split in the first frame, but he's put three in a row after that. And uh, uh, Tracy Bowling actually opened up with three in a row, and she had a spare in the, in the fourth frame. So now it's going to be a matter of can she keep that, that momentum up throughout the whole match. If she does that, this is a wrap. Outrageous crowd is coming alive here, and they need to because if you're looking up there, they're trailing in all three. 
Well, the, the outrage is winning on the uh, on the scratch pair, but you might as well say that it's getting close because now G Town has actually be, strung a three in a row and ready to shoot the middleman and ready to shoot uh, three in a row as well on this next ball. Yeah, well, they were winning. They're no longer winning. She got four, <coughs> four then three, then three. Yes. They're also up a bowler. That's true. That is true. Let's see what happens here. We throw a strike. Uh oh. What was what was my prediction, Gordon, at the beginning? Well, you said there could be an upset, and the key's going to be scratching right now. Scratch is and what down. And what else did I say? I said it could definitely be a blowout. Did I not? Yeah, but it's not a blowout yet. But however, it could be. They're working on it. Definitely working on it. McGinney Jr., the only person for outrage has got the front four. Uh-oh. Woo, this is going to be fantastic, baby. I'm telling you, all I see is strikes on G-Town's side on each pair, the, the scratch pair, the handicap pair, as well as the second team handicap. If they keep doing this, this is going to be a shutout. Oh, my goodness. They just threw another one. So let's go over the, the point system here. If, for each game won by either team, you get two points. For each team, whoever has those overall total pins, they get additional four points. That equals 10 points on each pair. Then you add up the total pins on all three pairs combined, you get additional 10 points. Right now, I'm looking at um, G-Town winning on all three pairs. It could be very tight now. Now uh, Hugh McGaney has to throw his next ball in the fifth frame. He's on. He's working on a 300 game, and he just left the seven pin. So now what that does is changes the momentum for as the game goes on because now his other teammates are forcing him to be perfect with every shot. G Town going into the sixth frame has all three. They can score another 30 points. They could blow this game wide open on each pair. This match may be over, not over, but this match may be sending a message. G-Town may be sending a message to outrage from the early part of the game. It's not how you start, but it's how you finish. But if you can put pressure on a team early on and, and get a definitive um, advantage against each pair, that's what's going to happen. Explain the point system. I just did. 40? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, all together, you can win 40 points. Once again, each team that wins a point, wins a game, gets two two points. You get additional four points overall uh, totals on on each pair, as well as additional combined totals for each pair. Uh, combined totals would be additional 10 points would give you a definitive win. Right now, it looks like uh, G Town is winning on every pair. The key, I want you to talk about this a lot. The key is overall total wood. That is correct. So when we're saying somebody's up by 20 or 30 or 40, that's the wood. Whoever winds up plus, that's the bonus pins. That's usually who wins. Now, yesterday, uh, G Town's first team handicap was way out front. And they, the question can be is now, are they, how many points, if they're going to continue to dominate, how many uh points can they win by as well as how many points can their second team handicap win right now the second team handicap for G Town is up at least more than 100 points Ooh, this is this is something else yeah this is this is gonna get I mean this has been high scoring this could get ugly very fast Wait, you said uh, spares are gonna win and I said no strikes are strikes are that is true but we wasn't expecting the X's to come from G Town we was expecting the X's to, the strikes to come from uh, well, G-Town has shown that they can strike. That is correct. Big time. So anyway, I mean, the difference is going to be, again, the wood. Right now, the wood's not going to matter if G-Town, and right now they're winning all three pair. All if three they continue pair. to do that, it ain't going to matter what the total wood's going to be. Well, remember, it's going to be a lot to a little. That is correct. Now, when you look at... Well, wait, he's pointing the score. What I'm going to point out is that two other bowlers on G-Town have not bowled yet. We understand what, what has to happen here, Gordon. If, if, if uh, 
G-Town throw two more strikes, that's additional 60 points that'll put them at least 20 on that scratch pair, put them at least 20 pins that or 24 pins. Very, very good. Needed that one. Needed that one by McGainey. Yes, McGainey is their leader on that scratch pair to, uh, today. He's been their leader the whole weekend. Well, if you were, well, you weren't here, you don't remember, but yesterday, Murder Inc. came out on fire and then Outrage said, oh, really? And then they came back and then they won all three. But that was because Murder Inc. folded. Right now, G Town not folding at all. They're, they're putting their pedal on the gas. G Town is matching the, the, the energy that, that, let me see here. They, if he throws a strike, it'll be 208 to, to 384. Let's see what he does. Correct. Hawk. And both teams having five marks also. Exactly. Outrage is finally picking it up in the second handicap. However, they're in a big hole. And I mean big hole. Big hole. On the second team handicap, going into the seventh frame, G-Town is winning 482 to, four, to 385. So right now you're looking at 60 pin lead. You're looking at going across 24, 60, and 80. 80. That's 140. That's 140. And I know you're focusing on KV. KV's not the problem. But the KV problem is all the X's coming from G-Town. That is the problem. Uh, and that they already getting 29 pins and 27 pins of handicap. So it gives them a whole lot of room for 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 error. That's funny, you're talking about Ethan Griffin, who you were wondering whether or not they're going to go to bowling because of yesterday. Griffin's got the front six. And uh, Tracy Bowling's bowling her head off today too as well. So they're making a big difference as opposed to yesterday. Once again, pressure burst pipes. You don't have to worry about, this, this, you, all you gotta do is let it hang out today. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes you do not change a roster. You are if correct. If someone's having a bad day, sir. Well, it depends. Everybody, you know, sometimes I would consider it, but you're right. Today is proving me wrong. I understand. You are the brain, but sometimes you're pinky. <laughs> I have to take that today. Well, yeah, I know. Shout out Animaniacs. I love that show. <laughs> so do I. G-Town. Mr. Griffin, Mr. Ethan Griffin is working on a 300. He has seven in a row already. Now we also don't talk about a lot about the women bowling. Most of the teams have nothing but men bowling, both Outrage and G-Town, two women. Samantha Ashley on one side and Tracy Bolin on the other. That is correct, and Tracy Bolin is really showing herself to be a true champion in terms of her ability to bowl. Tracy Bowling representing North versus South Vixens last South night Vixen, also. That is correct. By the, by the way, I didn't really introduce you, Malachi. Malachi, the current Northeast Cruiserweight Champion. Three-time Cruiserweight Three Champion. Three-time Cruiserweight Champion. Jack, this is run ends. And Outrage still has a chance to get into the scratch side. They're only down by 43 sticks. Oh, 45 six, I'm sorry. Less than that, if you McGainy doubles. If you McGainy, yes. If he throws a strike here, they'll be down by 25. But they, that's been the same, the, the correct margin since, since uh, G-Town took the lead. And quiet as it kept, on the first team handicap, Outrage is on their way back. Uh oh, McGainy had a at an open, not an open. Oh, but that he, that he would have given Outrage an outside shot of getting right back in the scratch. However, assuming he gets a spare, uh, G Town going to be up by around 25. That is correct. Outside G Town, Jonathan Bolin, and this time he better keep his jersey on. <laughs> if he throws a strike here, they'll be up by. Oh, uh, nobody wants to see naked Jonathan Bolin. Okay, he threw a strike. Well, Jersey staying on, not taking it off, which is good because I think that may break a couple of cameras. <laughs> and we joke around because uh, he is known to be taking off articles of clothing 
and he's done that a couple of times during the playoffs. Yes, he has. He's been. He's has a lot of exuberance. Yes, in that's his a good shows. way of putting it. Exuberance. Or exuber Billy. <laughs> Looks like outrage on each 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 pair now is starting to cut into the lead of uh, G Town. The question now is as eight and pair on uh, frames eight, nine, and ten. The question is, can can they finish? They have to continue to throw strikes. Well, they have to continue to throw strikes, and G Town's got to hold them off. They got to keep throwing strikes. Yes, sometimes sometimes right trying to right. hold somebody off can actually be more. Uh, disheartening than anything else. Absolutely. G Town continues to throw strikes. Outrage is starting to begin to throw a lot of spares here. Spares do keep you in the game, but, but they not what strikes. They don't beat strikes. Meanwhile, I'm going to look over here in the second handicap. You got Samantha Ashby, who, by the way, can go out for a 279. And then Tracy Bowen can go out, oh, 276. I would love to see that These matchup keep bowl. going. That's they can. And they're very competitive. G-Town cont continues to throw strikes. They're throwing strikes, and first-team handicap looks like outrage is throwing spares. Not only are they throwing strikes from everybody, they only have three opens. Between well, all three lanes, only three opens. Speaking of opens, now that, and remember the energy level I was talking about for uh, G-Town? Here it come, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You start getting them, you're getting them going, you're not going to stop them. It's like a runaway train. That is absolutely right. And G-Town, G-Town, they're known for saying G-Town Smackdown. So if you hear that a lot, you know how the match is progressing. Exactly. Meanwhile, let's look, look at Ethan Griffin. Seven in a row, looking for eight. Samantha Ashby looking for six. Oh, no. seven count. Seven count, and uh, why don't you guys split the boot? Let's see what Ethan Griffin does. Again, looking for eight in a row here. This is the ball. That ball looks good. It is. Ethan Griffin just threw another strike. Eight in a row for Ethan Griffin. Between Tracy Bowling and Ethan Griffin, they're, 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 holding, they're doing more than holding up their side. By the way, this match is sanctioned by USBC, so for 300 a shot here, it counts. Yes, it does. And he'll get a ring, unless he's already had one. Even though my guess is they've all had a bunch of rings. Now let's look at what uh, Outrage is doing on the first team hand, on, the, on the scratch pair. Mr. Mr. Brian Bennett just missed the 10 pin, and he's work, he, he has to get back on track. But I don't think it's going to be enough to pull him up. They're already down 47. Well, Brian Cavey, uh, Q, Q McGaney has to throw his strike. If he throws a strike, they only brings it down to 30, 37 down. Here we go. Hugh McGain just threw a strike, brings it down to 37. They were down at 21, but now with this, with the missed 10 pin, it's going to be even more bigger because Mr. Matthew Martin is, is getting ready to throw. If he throws a strike, that's 30 pins. That means that they go up at least 20 pins just from that, pair, just from that throw in the ball at that time. Let's see what he does. Brian Bennett just threw the ball. Ooh, he almost had a 7-10 split, turns into a strike. Isn't that special? Let's see what Mr. Martin can do. Can he match it with a strike, go up at least 30? He'll go up 20 pins on top of what uh, Mr. Bennett just did. He throws the ball. Left the 9 pin, left the 10 pin. That's not going to kill him because Mr. Bennett was throwing strikes the whole time throughout the whole game. But the question becomes, can he pick up this 10 pin? Sometimes when you're, when you're bowling and you end up having pressure on you, it sometimes can have a reverse effect. You're looking at the scores. He's looking at the score and he knows they have to pick up a 10 pin. That will end up causing a person to actually put too much pressure on yourself and you don't pick up the ball. The screen was for my, Mr. Michael Shook. He just threw another strike. He has four in a row. Mr. Martin Throw, he picks up the 10 pin. That's, that's a big 10 pin, especially since he has two people bowling behind him. And now coming up. 
Now coming up, Brandon Haney. If he throws a strike, he can he can put the uh, they have a, they have to move the pin out the way. As you mentioned, outrage. Here they come. They're coming right back to cut into at least the first to the second. However, G Town running away with it on the third handicap pair. Well, on the first team handicap, they're at least up by by uh, 68 or 67 sticks, depending upon what Brian Cavey does. Can he throw a strike? Mr. Cavey hasn't been throwing too many strikes this game. He's not doing bad, but he's not doing great. Mr. Cavey has a 231 average. And with that being said, he's going to have to match that. Yeah, that he's, not, he's not hitting a deuce, and that's a problem. No, he's the leadoff man. Leadoff man sets the, sets the tone for his team. Meanwhile, Brandon Haiti, seven, seven in a row. That's huge because he's matching the, the, the energy that Richard Jerome is throwing oh, he, out there. He's playing keep away with, with, yes. with outrage. It's sort of like the guy with the fishing hook. But what? Well, you can't catch it. Can't catch it. Can't catch it. It makes a world of a difference. Once again, Brian Cavey just threw a left a ten pin. It's a tap city out here if you don't if you don't if you don't approach the pocket in the, in the correct angle. All right, Hugh McGainey just just he doubled up. That's huge for the for the tenth frame. Yeah, well, you know, obviously Outrage is going to go for the win, but if they could cut the wood down, that would be a big victory for them. If they could cut the wood, now they've got to match or do better than what's going on in the handicap because the handicap right now, yikes. Jack Ness just, mat just matched Hugh Ganey's uh, strike, so they're both going into the 10th frame with, with on a Let's double. Let's focus. Ethan Griffin, ninth frame, has got the front eight. Here's a shot. There it goes. Looks good. He it just is. threw another one. That's nine in a row. Brian Cavey just missed that 10 pin. That's huge. That could bust open the lead even more. It's going to put even more pressure on your team. It's got to put pressure on Calvin Thomas right now. He's up next. Yes, even more. You're right. Calvin Thomas, Eric Wallace, they better pick it up, and they need to pick it up quickly. The problem is that the at problem this is point. they're running out of frames. Exactly. And they, they're going to they're gonna lose this game. But the question is, you, at this point, you start worrying about getting the, getting the pin count down. So you might, you might start off bad the first game. But you need to be able to recover and try to bring even more of a count back down so you can at least give yourself a chance to get overall pins. Yep, here comes Scratch. Again, Brian Bennett, huge opportunity to double in the Scratch. Does not do it. Matthew Martin capitalizes. He throws a strike. If Matthew Martin goes out with a 258, and it looks like here, Mr. Bennett can go out with a 95. Well, there's your 40 right there. Yeah, he can 215. go out with 225. 215. That's 215, that's even worse. That is not the kind of start you, you want from the get-go. No, if you're not going to at least keep it close, and right now they're not keeping it close. In fact, we were looking at a 140-pin lead uh, projectedly early on. It's even, it's even more than that now. Ah, uh, yes it is. With the performances from the from the scratch pair to hand it first and second team handicap, this match may be over now. It won't be over now. It's, uh, Gordon, would you agree that if a, if a team is up almost 300 pins in the first game, that is hard to overcome? It is hard, not impossible. We saw that happen last year with Murder Inc. That is true. It can happen. However, Outrage is in a very weird position. During their runs, they have never been down this much this early. Well, Remember I said to you early in the match about fatigue, which affects your focus in the match. Looks yeah, like I, I don't, I don't think it's a play because she Jones had the same fatigue. Yeah, but they, not, have, not, they, haven't, they haven't had the bowl as much for so much. Uh, With the brawl on the line, you know that there takes a lot well, but of as focus I said before, in the match. Well, but as I said before, the brawl, she Town bowled the World Championship Series, so I consider that a draw. Okay. But it wasn't their whole team, though. Doesn't matter. Not Outrage's old team either. They only had six, and some of those six are not in this lineup. Looks like Tracy, Bol Tracy Bowling can go out in her first game with a 257 if she strikes out. I mean, both women are going to be, could potentially be 240 plus. Yes. Malachi's going to tap me when Ethan Griffin's up. He's got the front nine, potential 300. Meanwhile, scratch side. Bennett's going to finish 215. Richard Jerome Jr., who, by the way, I'm going to talk about this later. Yeah. 
and uh, he's coming over to check out the 300. Unfortunately, I am known as the Dark Cloud, and we know what happens when I mention something. Well, hopefully by me sitting here next to you, Gordon, that, that won't be the case today. So you're the good cloud? I'm the good cloud. You're the good cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the scratch team. Mr. Brain is the happy cloud. So I can't say that, Mr. Happy is on the handicap pair too. That's Ray Smarsh, and right now I'll guarantee you he's not very happy. And remember we talked about before the match how his, how his performance is going to be a key for his team's overall uh, success. Yeah, right now G-Town 256, 259. And Ethan Griffin got the front nine. He's up. Second handicap pair. Let's see what happens here. Well, Richard Jerome is doing his part. He shot a 266. Let's go over here. On the scratch pair. Okay, so I need that okay, front now 10. We're, now we're looking at the front 10. I'm sorry, not yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is he not up yet? yet? He should be up. He should be. He's not up yet. Now he's up. Ethan. Ethan has an opportunity to shoot 300 this first game. That's huge coming out from the, oh, he just missed. He left the 10 pin. Nice run. Very nice run. Meanwhile, Jack Ness, first shot in the 10th. By the way, former WCS champion Jack Ness with the strike. That will seal up fast for G-Town. And we already know that G-Town's gonna win first and second handicap. So right now, G-Town is up six zip. Wow. And, and they have a whole lot of uh, total pins to potentially put a whole lot of pressure on outrage. Better believe it. Uh, and uh, it won't be over 200, but it will be a lot. It'll be close to it. We'll be close. Well, you know what? It could be over 200. I shouldn't say it won't be. It could be. Now, my voice may be a little squeaky here, but... It sounds, it sounds like it's getting better. Thank you. I have I have been doing, as you know, six hours straight commentary for four straight days. This is day number five. Okay, Brian Cavey just is trying so, to eat into so that. My, I need lead. my voice to stick around for two more games before it goes on vacation. Yes, we definitely need that, Gordon. Eventually, it'll go on vacation. You're gonna be. You're gonna. You're gonna have a much needed vacation, sir. <laughs> Okay, Ethan. Mr. Ethan Griffin goes out with a 279. A whole, uh, section of Tracy right Bowling starts off with a 247. Yeah, yes, you do. And in addition to that, they're already getting receiving 27 pin handicap. That's huge. By the way, G Town, 773 scratch. 773 scratch. Wow. Scratch. That's, that, that's, nobody expected that type of. Output. Each one of those bowlers shot over uh, 250 in the first game. The only reason why. Think about it this way, Hugh. If he goes out 259, 740 scratch, and they're going to lose. Yes, and they'll lose by 33 sticks. Sometimes that's a, that's even more important because if you're able to go out and keep you, and you keep this pin keep count, now down. you got to hope that your other two pairs are able to recover and break bring that bring down that uh, yep. handicap pair or bring back the uh, difference. Ooh. You, you again, one more strike as you said. 259, 740 scratch, and they lose. The difference of 33, 33 sticks. I'm looking at the two handicap pairs to see how they finish because that determines the overall total points As ahead. you should, absolutely. Now, let me ask you a question, Gordon. If you ask are on me anything. If you're on outrage and you see that your team is losing on all three pairs, the handicap pair is at least 70 on each pair ahead, what would be going through your mind right now? Uh, honestly, it would be big whoop, big deal. We're not being blown out by over 100 pins. 70 is very makeable. 
and that's one good thing that Outer Age did. As you said, they were planning on being blown out by over 100. They cut it down to 70. You can make up 70 in two games, right? That's pretty easy. They do that all the time in the UVA. You would think that that would be the case. That, but the that would be my thought. That would be your thought, but my concern becomes what is it that if, you're two, if you have two people on your pair who, ha who average over 230 and they're not even close to their average, that would begin to, to, to work with you, would it not? No, I, I'm outraged. I don't panic. I know what my team is. I know what they brought here. You can make up 70 pins in two games. Some of the outraged people may be panicking. I'm not panicking. If it, and, I, and I think, again, you're going to cut it down game two, cut it down game three. You're also going to say, you know what, G-Town is not going to do that again the other two games. G-Town, what I'm expecting them to do, if they jump on them early in the second game, you're going to see this place start to go get real loud real fast. I have a feeling you're still going to hear G-Town smackdown at the end of this game. Exactly. To me, all the nervousness is going out the door. Now it's going to be about energy going forward. Mr. Bennett starts the next game off with, a, with leaving the seven pin. He has yeah, to well, pick that up. While we're chatting about that, I'm going to do the math and give you the exact overall wood momentarily. All right. Oh, bowling right now, if he goes at that towards the 206. And, and that's the thing that outreach. I'm just, sorry, he's going to go 240, so, uh, 256. I just mentioned to you earlier, I just mentioned to the crew about about the fact that it's important that you come out at least picking up your spare. Brian Bennett just missed a uh, an opportunity to pick up a 10 pin. Yeah, and, and, and then Brian Hong gives it right back, pick four. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brandon, Andy gives it back, yes. pick four. Sometimes you can make you can make a mistake. The question is, how are you gonna how are you gonna start off the next game? It seemed like to me that both teams are still kind of nervous. It doesn't seem like they're. Well, you're playing for thirty thousand dollars. Of course, you're going to be nervous. Well, to me, I wouldn't even think about the. I wouldn't think about that. I would just come out just to bowl like I normally do. You keep doing what you do that got you here. Ethan Griffin starts off again along with Tracy Bowling with strikes on the second team handicap. They seem like they're locked in. Well, you know, it's interesting. Again, they cut it down. Uh, I always cut the wood down. They made it manageable. Scratch is only thirty-three. Handicap one is only sixty. Okay, and what's the uh, second team handicap? Doing that right now. And we were projecting at least 140 sticks, correct? Well, at that mark, they were. Now, again, these are big numbers that uh, G-Town's putting up. I still say when a team has nothing to lose like G-Town does, they're going to make, if, if Outrage come back and win this match, they're going to have to earn it. Oh, yeah, but Outrage, they're good enough to earn it. So you got 99, so we're looking at right now around 93. All right, 192, unofficial, 192 as to the wood. Almost 200, that's Almost a lot. Not, that's not that impossible lot, to come back it on. It is not impossible. It's not, they have to take it inch by inch, I mean not inch by inch, I'm sorry. They have to uh, take it mark, fra frame mark, by frame. Mark by mark, frame by frame, row by row. And they have to hope that G-Town uh, loses their focus. But right now, they look like they continue on from the first game. Well, right now, if it's game two, you don't necessarily need a lot of mistakes. You just need them to stop carrying, and you also need to start carrying. Well, um, Brian KB is not carrying. He's getting spares. <laughs> Mr. Michael Shook shot another starter strike. So you, I mean, they're not, you, you they wanna, look like wanna, they're picking up from where they left off at the last game. You intensity only out of the 18 bowlers, only one score under 200. And who was that? Uh, that's Ray Smarsh, 193. And we talked about Mr. Famer. Ray Smarsh before, did we not? He carries a 237 average. So if he had a what, what he had a one what? 193. That's a lot of pins underneath your regular average, sir. That's well, again, 44 uh, pins well, underneath your average. You know, you're not panicking, you gotta carry. You gotta come back. 
Brian Bennett with the strike. Here comes Outrage, and they're starting. Scratch is starting with a whole bunch of strikes. And we already have an open on the board for G-Town. Do have a spare, but again, Outrage does not need to panic. They just need to carry and strike and carry. In that's order, what they need to do. If I was uh, G-Town, I would tell them, let's keep it going. They need to, they need to get their crowd to get their uh, energy level up. So they well, Outrage is banking that G-Town does not do game two what they did game one. Well, they're playing, they're playing catch up now, so we got to see what happens. Well, you got to play catch up now. And that's exactly what they're doing on the scratch side. They're already up on scratch. Now they want to keep building. I have seen Outrage in one game beat Murder Inc. by over 200 pins during the regular season. They have a capability on that one pair to beat you up by over 200 pins. Here comes Samantha Ashley. Here comes the crowd getting into it. To me, G-Town is keeping up the pressure. The more they keep striking, and if they, even if the games end closely and they win a couple more games, they could eat, they, this could be a 22-18 matchup. Uh, it could be. I mean, you know, one of the things that I said about the Murder, Inc. outrage match was that despite the wood, if you can win all the little games and sneak all that in there, you can still steal the game and the match. Exactly. However, outrage right now needs to do something that they did not do the first round, which is win a game. They got skunked. They need to start winning games. Well, I, we don't expect Outrage to get defeated on every pair <laughs> each game. Now, if that happens the second match. Well, well if that happens game two, uh-oh. McGainey just throws Here another strike. Outrage. Start looking at that scratch pair. That scratch pair may start galvanizing everybody else. But remember, in the first in the first game, Outrage start off with a bunch of strikes, and then they ended up uh, losing their way. Yeah, but part of the reason why they lost their way was that G Town was also heading on right around with, right around with, right around with them, not holding their own right now, which is opening the door for outrage. They're already up by 20 to keep going. Right now, if you're just joining, I'm Gordon. This is Malachi, the brain. The brain. The brain. Kurt Cruz of Northeast Cruiserweight champion right now. G Town laying SmackDown on outrage. G Town won the first game, 6 Boy, seven. are they ever. Ray Smart still throwing spares. Spares at least keep you in the game, but you really have to start striking now. Now here we get. Now here's the third frame coming up. Outrage, all three of their bullets on strikes. This may determine very early what the timbre this is going to be. And he left the seven, seven pin. pin. That's the same pair that he he left the seven pin and he missed the, he missed the, the spare. So. Let's see what happens now. Is, do you think there's any pressure? He's a, he's a veteran, so he shouldn't have any pressure. I, I don't think it's pressure. I think it's frustration. He's trying to make an adjustment. He hasn't made it yet. And meanwhile, Brian, uh, Brandon Haney does not like that shot. Now, Brandon Haney, re, he should blame himself for that because he stood up yeah, as that, he that, that was out a, that ball. Well, no, no. He knew he threw a bad shot. He's not. That was not a what the heck, Leans. That was a, oh, no, that was a bad shot, and I know it. Right, but he, the reason why, because he started popping up as, as he was coming through the ball. Do you correct, sir? Meanwhile, uh, another strike over an outrageous side. However, again, they need more of those. Just throwing spares is not enough. <laughs> Brian Bennett picks up the spare, which he should pick the spare up. And the adulation is from Brian, is from Bennett making a spare. With everybody yelling bonus. And Mr. Haney picks up the spare as well. So the question is now, who's going to actually get, who's going to start striking between Mr. Bennett and, and Mr. Uh, you Haney? You know, we get emails. I got complaints that I sort of neglected Richard Jerome Jr., even though all he did was shoot a 760 yesterday. That's all. Jerome Jr. is an incredible bowler. He's won lots of accolades. He is one of the main pieces of the scratch squad for outrage. I want to make sure... And of course, now that and I say that. And as soon as you said, there you go, Gordon, again. That, he good, feels good, good job, a ten pin. Way to go, Gordon. Go in the dark cloud. Maybe you should say it after he throws a strike or so. Well, you know. <laughs> now they're going to say, gosh darn it, Gordon, why did you mention that? <laughs> if you shut up, he would have shot another 760, then we would have busted you on that. Oh, my goodness. Poor man. Yeah, poor man, poor anything. Poor me. I get no love. 
Mace, and, put a target on my and why Sammy are you saying that? Jack Ness throws right a strike. Up. So let's see if now Q McGainey has to pick up a strike now. He has to match. He has to continue to match the energy of be ahead of him. Well, I clearly remember. I clearly remember saying yesterday in the Outrage Murder Inc. match, you're out by 300. You don't have to do much. You just don't have to lose by 200. Same thing here at G Town. If they don't have to uh, throw a lot of strikes, they just can't lose by 200 pins. Well, it looks like on the second team handicap that G Town is 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 starting to try to begin to open up a lead again. That's well, good. yeah, absolutely, and and you're getting some opens over an outrage, and more importantly, you're getting non carry. And we thought that if this was going to be a carry contest, advantage outrage. This is Ooh. starting to be a grind game too. And as long as it stays like this, where no one is carrying, it is advantage G Town. That now that I correct. just said that, Samantha Ashley, second handicap pair, two in a row. Well, she started off great the last game. She shot a 240. Yeah, but I'm saying, with, with that being said, Tracy Bowling matched her with a 247. So at the same time, yeah. that could pretty much almost negates what she did. So then it's up to the other two bowlers. That's true. And the other two bowlers, we, you, we already mentioned, 279, 279 to 193. There's exactly. your game. That's your game right there, Ray Smarts, unfortunately. Okay, Mr. Bennett, he's he not throwing strikes. He's throwing, he's throwing nine counts. Okay, and the key of the game is first game, and right now, G-Town. Big G-Town, 190. Outrage has got to come back. This will not get it done. This second game could be the difference between this match being over, to be honest with you, Gordon. Well, you know what? Second game, as I said, you can get back into this if you start chipping. And Outrage needs to start chipping. And once again, instead of uh, Brian K uh, uh, Brian Bennett throwing a strike, he threw a, he threw a nine count. And Ma Mark Math Matthew Martin comes back and throws two, a double. Question is, who's going to throw the next strike on Alfred's side? They need to start throwing strikes like yesterday. Okay, Brian Bennett picks up his spare. That's a, bit, that's a big spare because at least it keeps you close. Had he thrown another uh, open, uh, Mr. S Mr. S seven pin, that would have been a major disaster. Well, it's not just strikes, it's who's gonna carry and throw the next double. Exactly. Someone has to throw besides Samantha. The double Samantha needs some help, Hugh nope. needs some help. Yes, they do, but the question, well, Hugh McGainey needs some help as well. Nobody on the on the first team handicap for outrage has really, def this really established themselves as uh, setting the tone. I thought Michael Shook would do so, but he's throwing spares right now. RJ's doing his part. He's trying to hold up. Him and uh, Hugh McGainey are starting to hold up uh, Brian Bennett. Richard Jerome Jr., I gets a strike. I should stop talking about him. <laughs> Brian Cavey with a double. He's now starting to lead outrage. And again, he may be the strike. That's just a drink. Remember, anybody who's in the first position, they set the tone for the match. They set the energy, they set the tone, and they get they get their team encouraged to be able to follow him. Follow the leader, as they say. Yeah, now let's quickly look at the deficits at this moment. Ah, uh, let's see. Outrage is up to 20, and now they're up by 10 on the handicap. And they're down by 40 on handicap, too. This is what you certainly need to see, but they need to do bigger than what they're currently doing. Well, let's put it this way. With what Hugh, Hugh McGaney has to continue to strike, as well as uh, RJ. The question is, will they only up by 23 sticks? And this is early in the, in the match. That's what happened the last time between G Town and Outrage. Outrage started out quick, early, quickly, but the finishing job was done by G Town on the scratch pair. On the other two pairs, once again, in the first, like the first game. G-Town start out real strong, and they've ended it real strong. If this happens again, and they win by more than 100 pins, this match is over. I agree with you there. I, you know, 190 is make all the come back from. You're not coming back from 200 300. No, exactly. no. Not against G-Town, and not how the lanes are playing right now. Though if they did, that would be a huge comeback of the year story. And once again, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Bennett throws, throws a seven count. And Mr. Matthew Martin throws, and now he's on a turkey. Eighth, he's leaving a seven pin, not through a seven count. Now the other, th say it again. He said he threw a seven count. No, Brian Bennett. He, he left, yes. He left one. 
Exactly. That's not a seven count. No, I said no. Okay, yeah, all right. My bad. You're right. You're right. My bad. Right now, I do wear glasses. you and Outrage are doing the same thing, which is right now currently in a haze. Well, let's put it this way. If if G Town ends up if G Town ends up uh, getting on a on a on a on a roll with their strikes, they well they did that negates that. Uh, Mr. Haney just led a night. Good job, Malachi. Night count, yeah. I am not the only one that can be the dark cloud. Hi, Malachi Moore. No, I didn't say that. I didn't, he had already threw the ball though. R.J. throws his, he doubles up. As Richard Jerome, here comes a scratch side. Here comes Rage March with a double. As we said, we needed outrage people to pick up. They're starting to pick up. And he responds with a spare. He has four in a row. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hain Mr. McGaney has uh, four in a row. Let's see what happens with uh, oh. this Uh-oh. Going, going golfing. Four count. Six count, I'm sorry. We got a slice. Somebody get a picture of that. Seeing G Town jersey slice. Oh, 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 no. Jason Howard looking to capitalize that. He doesn't. He leaves a seven pin. However, here comes Outrage. It's going to go 42 on marks there. And again, four on a spare, you're going to lose a mark. So theoretically, they gain on three marks. It'll get closer if he don't pick it up. He's not uh -oh, picking he's it up. It right in the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a chance. He needed that ball to come back a little bit more. Yep. But now, if you look at on the scratch pair. Wait, wait, wait. We got a megaphone sighting. <laughs> 23 uh -oh. and 24, we have a megaphone sighting. I, I'm going to come over here. Let's go chat with the megaphone. I'll be right back. Okay. Mr. Mahaney. Is that a megaphone? Mr. Jack Ness over is here. Strike. Now, let's I want to hear it. Let's do a megaphone. Does to match it. He, they're going to have to match it. All right. So who am I here with? What's your name? Cameron Bennett. Cameron. Now, what do we got over here with that megaphone? Talk to me about that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right now, would you like to use a megaphone? Outrage. <laughs> All right, we're done with this Tom Fullery. Back over here. G Town on the second team handicap continues to uh, put more more pressure on Outrage. At, at Miss Ashley actually has a split in the sixth in the fifth frame. You know, we talk about more cowbell. I think Outrage needs more megaphone. <laughs> we'll see. I, I know one thing they do need, they need less open. Samantha Ashby with one over there. That is and correct. all of a sudden. Tracy Bowling on three in a row. Griffin is, is, is on, is potentially row three in a row. Let's see what happens. Whatever progress Outrage is making on scratch, they're giving it away on the handicap side. They can't afford that. No, absolutely not. Not when you're down by 190 after game one. And that split from KB does not help. Meanwhile, handicap two, G Town pouring it on. Ethan Griffin, who had the front nine game one. Here he goes again. Three out of, three out of five game two, and he's trying with Tracy Bolin. Now the question is, can Mr. Mr. James Hess, Mr. James Hahn get on a roll here? Yeah, James Hahn again. Oh, brother of Brian Hahn, who has, or he is Brian Hahn, who, by the way, has won a title. Of the World Series Southeast Handicap Friday. You actually have Southeast Champion versus Southeast Champion on that pair. Well, each pair, as far as I'm concerned, are very accomplished just to arrive here. But you do have some things that distinguishes one bowler versus another. Mr. Mr. Horn throws a six count. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Their two top bowlers are picking him up. That is true. They picked them up the, up the first game, but if the, I believe they're going to sweep that pair and definitively win the match across the board, he's going to have to get it, pick it up. Absolutely. Just like Ray Smart looked like he's picked it up this this second game. He has three in a row. He's doing much better than he did the first game. Let's go for here on first handicap. Eric Walls is up if he strikes. Howard takes the leads on the handicap pair. Oh, 
Oh, that's Bolin. Only one pair of spare, however, focus on Wallace. Now Wallace had a um, had a had a he, he threw a nine count. Wallace is up right now. Okay. Wallace strikes. Outreach takes the lead. There's people standing in our way, so it's kind of challenging. That looks good. No sir. He leaves leaves a seven pin. They needed that. Just saying. <laughs> Human Gini Jr.'s got the front five looking for six right now. <laughs> Human Gini Jr., he, he is he's bowling with a lot of energy today. He's trying to he's trying to encourage his whole team, not just the scratch team today. Oh yeah, the scratch right now is up. It doesn't matter what Jack does, does but attack just does not throw a strike. Here comes the scratch pair. Speaking of opens, Tracy Bowen with the split over on handicap pair two. Each team is keeping it tight. This is this is not a blowout like the first like the first game. Outrage is starting to figure it out, and G Town is starting to open. That is a bad combo. One, two, three, four. Four opens in the past frame for G Town. That is not good. It's not good, but at the same time, too, uh, Brian Cavey has an open in the last frame as well. So the two, on a first on his first team handicap, it evens itself out, even though they're off three. It doesn't because you got a double versus strike. We, oh yeah, that's true. So right now, looking at this in there, at this mark. Scratch, Outrage is up by round 20. Handicap number one, Outrage is now up by round 20. However, handicap number two, G-Town up by round 70. That being said, Rage Marshall can cut into it with another strike. And then even Griffin's got to fend him off. Here we go, Smarsh is going up there first. Ray Smarsh, the former uh, Northern Heavyweight Champion. Let's see world if he, what he does on this match. Former world champion as well. I'm sorry. Ray Smart for another strike. He has four in a row. He definitely corrected what he was doing wrong the first the first game. Let's see if Ethan can match that same energy that, that uh, and, Ray Smart and, has. And this is a huge point over here because if he doesn't, here comes Outrage. Big shot here for Griffin. And he gets a strike. He He's matching the energy. They came to bowl today. G-Town came to bowl. Richard Jerome. He's up right now looking for a big hit. Back, back, six, 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 oh. Richard Jerome with the shot. And once again, with Gordon saying something, he leaves a 10 pin. Now Kai's decided Eric to Wallace stand up. picks up his, his, seven, his 10 pin. Alvarez right now still looking to cut into the lead. The question becomes, is it enough? Mr. Hahn comes back and picks a, picks a strike after he had an open. Question is, now, can yeah, outrage may get on the board, but they got to make more cuts on that wood than what they're currently doing. Outrage needs to start. They need to win all three pairs as well as try to cut into that three. lead. I would say they got to cut into the wood though, and they really got to cut into the handicap two wood. Let me see if we're looking at potential where teams can 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 uh, pick up. Opportunity is the Brian. Uh, was it um, McGaney? McGaney. He need he needs to throw a triple here. Oh, well, he's got the front. Put him up five. what? Twenty three well, pins. Got the front six. Another strike 25 here. Twenty five pins. Put him up by twenty five pins. Yeah, twenty five pins. So they need that win. They need a win on 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 one pair at least. Bottom of the strike. G-Town trying to fend off Outrage on the second pair. 
right now, G-Town is up. They're only up by four pins. That's the second pair. Here's Yumagani. He's still waiting. We've been talking about him a little bit. He still hasn't thrown his eighth shot, or seventh shot. This sorry. is a big shot for him. Sure is. Oh, it's good. This is what bowling's Seven about. Seven in man. a row for you. This is what bowling is all about. Scratch Bear is only up by 25 pin, but Hugh cannot afford to miss because his other two play, two bowlers, even though they're very well accomplished, they're only getting spares. Well, if you're outraged, you got to make some headway here, and you cannot be opening. And more importantly, you can't okay. be doing that. Okay, Brian Bennett just gave Hugh McGaney some 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 help here. Let's see if uh, Mr. Martin can pick up. If he doubles, that's just going to continue to give them even more leverage in the match. Davey with the double. After this, let's focus on handicap two. We've got the the Ethan Griffin versus Ray Smarch match. Griffin with a strike. Ethan and Ray Smarch are having a shootout here, but they're yeah, really Martin they're really the neutralizing themselves. And there's going to be the difference between the anchor man, Mr. Hahn, versus Jason Howard. Mr. Howard versus Mr. Howard. The question is, who's going to who's going to blink first? Watch right now, looking to match. He has to throw a strike here. Oh, he left the seven pin. Uh oh, don't tell me I, I got the I got the um, Gordon hey. Gordon Pepper. Uh, oh, first, first, <clears throat> first draw, you left the ten pin. Yeah, he left. Seven. Oh, sorry, ten pin. Second of all, more importantly, Han with another strike. Five marks on G-Town's side versus at best four on Outrage. That's gonna enable uh, G-Town to move even further ahead of them. This is gonna come down to the wire. A3 and Humagini front seven. We've seen this before. Lucky shot by Jonathan Bowling. He got a strike, but that should have been a split. Mr. Eric Wallace matches his energy. He has a double. So both Eric Wallace and uh, Jonathan Bowling have doubles that are working off going into the seventh frame. Yep, G-Town up by four. Four is the margin over on the middle pair. Now let's go over to Hume Ganey, front seven, looking at eight. It done got quiet in here, Gordon. I think everybody wants to see Hugh McGaney uh, throw a strike here. Let's see if he does. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the crowd says that all. That would be yes. I'll tell you one thing. It's a close meanwhile, match. Meanwhile, Jack Ness, meanwhile, was talking about that. There we go. Jack Ness looking for seven in a row also. He matched it. He yes. matched it. There's no room for error on the scratch pair at all going into the ninth and tenth frame. Nope. Meanwhile, back on first team handicap, Brian Cavey just shot a uh, shot. Of, he got a shot of turkey. And now let's see what happens. Uh-oh. It's four in a row. Well, you got four, pay, four pins well, on Sh handicap one, and then the difference now is 14 pins on scratch. At this point on handicap one, nobody can miss. You have to strike out. <laughs> Mr. Bennett has to strike here just to, just to keep pace. Going into the 10th frame. Oh, he leaves the t this 10 pin. And all of a sudden, G-Town's got the lead again. G-Town now has the lead back on scratch. Handicap one, Outreach is looking to come in there and not just win by win by a little bit, get some wood. Handicap two, G-Town is turning to SmackDown. Well, it looks like G-Town is putting the SmackDown all the way around. 
They're maintaining their four point lead. Handicap to G Town. I'm sorry, Outrage, seven in a row. G Town also looking for seven in a row from Lee Bowen. I'll be honest with you, Tracy Bowling is making a difference uh, in terms of G-Town's performance on the, on the second team handicap. Well, Tracy Bowling's doing a good job right now, though, the person that's making a difference. Ethan Griffin. Ethan Griffin. The problem is, is that Ray Smarsh is not on his, uh, he didn't make five in a row. He left a, a, a spare. And now that with uh, Griffin throwing uh, one, two, three, six in a row, and if Han oh, that's why throw, they're up by round six. Are you looking for more? Ooh, the Han throws a split. That's that's a big miss. Now the, the, you the, mean Smarsh? That was Smarsh. Yep. Oh Here's no. Here's Han coming up right now, looking for three in a row. Woo. That's it. Well, I don't know how uh, Ray Smarsh going to pick this this uh, split up. He's going to have to though. Oh, uh, Aiden, Richard did not like that one. And the bigger issue here is on scratch. Ray Smarsh didn't pick that spare up. <laughs> Richard Jerome sh shot an eight count. And, uh, and, and, uh, well, the bigger problems that you're going to have, spares don't beat strikes. Exactly, especially when you have three in a row. Looks like G-Town's coming back again. They're gonna, if they win on all three pairs, all three lanes is going to be the it's going to be difference of any. It's going to be very demoralizing. Yes, it's going to be very hard outrage, to come back and win. Especially if you lose a scratch. And then what happens is in the in the in the and, and look on handicap too. Right now you got opens and a wall of strikes. G Town can blow this open in the ninth frame. This match could be over after this after this uh, this game here. They'll be over 300. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good your team is. It's very hard, very difficult. Unless you have a total collapse by a team, you'll be up. They'll be up. G Town will be up over 300. And points. now that you've just said that, Michael Schuker with an open. Yeah, that you can't you can't do that right now with Brian Covey throwing three in a row. And outrage right now, looking to take advantage and get on the scoreboard. That would be a big. That would be a big uh, morale booster. Two, nine in a row. <laughs> well, at least you didn't say anything, Gordon. What? At least you didn't say anything. You. Hi, KB. Here we go. All right. Now, Brian KB finally turned it around. He has four in a row. And here's what G-Town needs to be really, really worried about. Outrage tonight now has got the wall of strikes. <laughs> And they are in position to maybe take a lot of pins out of game two and blow them out. G Town's got to be really worried about that. G, -T G Town's got to be real worried about what? It, it, they're going to win the first team. They're going to win the scratch pair. They're going to win the uh, no, second no, team handicap. Uh, no, 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 no. That one's still very tight on the scratch. No, pair. it's not. Uh, Brian Bennett just threw a nine count in the tenth frame, and. Martin hadn't even thrown the ball yet. He's working on three right, in a row. Right now it's only a 10-pin game. That could be the difference of the game. Well, if he hits a strike here, they will take the lead. No, 10-pin. 10 10-pin. 10 there you go, Gordon. Malachi. It's not over, baby. Malachi. Trust me when I tell you, this, this match is over. Well, let's talk to the game first before the match. Yeah, that's true. G-Town continues to throw strikes. Make the spare. No, he got it. Heard an uh oh in the back. No, uh oh. He made that one. Mr. Griffin just threw a seven in a row. Now let me ask you a question, Gordon. Uh, hold that on one second. Let's finish this out. Brian Bennett, 184. Matthew Moyne with the strike here, 225. 
two, 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 three. Yes, sir. Now ask. Okay. Say, say, first team handicap for outrage wins by 60 pins. That still brings it down to 190. I mean, 160. I mean, 130. That's, that's say that the scratch pair wins by at least 30. So that, do you think that uh, G-Town will, will buckle over 100, 100 sticks in the last game? I think anything is possible. I have seen crazy stuff happen. That's true. Ooh. And that, ooh. Oh, and just when I just said that, Good Mr. Job. Eric Wiles. <laughs> John Malachi, the best. He just, he just misses the right seventh. right now with a shot in game two, the big shot here if he strikes. And no, 10 pin. Big, big strike here from Jerome for insurance policy purposes. Big shot here. Got it. Richard Jerome has been the difference uh, in terms of going along with uh, Hugh McGaney in terms of his last game here uh, between the two before outrage and make, in terms of making a difference. Looks like here on the for G Town. Mr. Martin okay. Haney has really been hurting himself. I don't know if he's going to even go over 200 this game. Ow. Looks like the I'm going to explain something to you after this game. All right. If you're telling me that you don't think Outrage can come back and win the wood, they don't have to, and I'll explain that momentarily. Now looking to shoot. Strike finishes with 181. That 180. So going into the last between the two well, anchor let's, let's go over here on the scratch. Anybody can still win this game on the scratch. Oh, well, pair. forget that one second. Human Gainey front nine. Looking for a tray. But Gainey still has to strike out in order for them to well, win the game. Well, that's usually how you win a 300 is if you strike out. No, no, I'm saying he has to go out with the 300 order to seal the win for his uh, team. Well, he needs the first one. First one seals it. They're up by four, by 14 pick sticks. <laughs> yep, first one seals it. Yes. First shot here. This is for game two. Outrage will get on the board. Assuming again that Hugh McGainey does not make a mistake, a major one. He only needs eight pins, eight and spare. That's true. And he also needs Jack Ness to not strike here. And he strikes. Nice try, Gordon. <laughs> Second ball here. As we said before, eight is good. Eight is good. Obviously, he's looking for more than that. Yes, he is. He wants to shoot a 300. Don't jinx him. <laughs> That's your department, Gordon. Don't jinx him. Hugh McGaney just made sure he closed out so that they can have a win. Outrage at least have a win on the scratch pair. He got one more strike for a 300 game. Yeah, it's really hard when somebody shoots a 290 and you go short. 290, no good. All looks good. The thing yeah, is, for 290, every, no good. You're right. Maybe, 
Meanwhile, Ethan can go out for a 280. <laughs> Nothing but fantastic and nobody's moment. talking about it. Not when Hugh's going for a 300. 280, third best. However, Hugh McGinney Jr. going for a try. He got, he got the 300. Went from a 7-10 split to a 300. He got the carry. Hugh McGady, ladies and gentlemen, with a 300. Now, even with that 300, Jack Ness could still keep the game close. With, they'll only lose by 14 sticks on the, on, the, on the scratch pair. Let's see if uh, Jack Ness can get a 290. So you got a 300 and 290 on the same pair. They both are anchormen. Uh, by the way, we'll mention is also a 290 and a 280 being the same game, but we don't care. 289. It's still a great Jack game. Jack Ness, 290. I'm sorry, 289, Jack Ness. Outrage on the scratch pair, won by 15 sticks. And let's go quickly to a second handicap pair, 17-18. Ethan Griffin leaves a uh, a five count on his last ball. He leaves a, a two. He goes out for a two seventy five. Now, once again, this is still two, close. Two very quiet two seventy nines. Exactly. <laughs> I still say outrage is feeling the pressure. Mr. Shook can go out for, let me see. He has two in a row, he can go out for 213. And you're, you're right on one thing, if you look over here on Scratch, if you're outraged, you need the opposite to be happening to what is going on. And Brian Cavey just missed the, missed the, the 10 pin. That's big when you're talking about that, with one more strike, that's a 10 additional points. Let's see who can win this game now. He done made the, he done made the game closer. He definitely made the game closer. You know, Average looked like they had a shot to go out and get some wood. That 9-0 instead of three in a row, it's 31 pins he left on the table. Yes, that's a lot of pins. And if even more than that, 33 pins on the table. If Mr. Shook throws a strike. All right, Mr. Shook throws a strike here. Right now on the first team handicap. Let's see if the second bowler for G-Town throws a strike here. Oh, he does. Mr. Calvin Thomas threw an eight count for his first ball. Once again, uh, G-Town seems to be eating into that lead. The concern here is that if Kevin Head throws another strike, G-Town will only be will, will actually take the lead here. G-Town absolutely can take the lead. Keep in mind they've got to double to a strike at the bottom. So outrageous fortunes could change very quickly. He throws a strike. They came to bowl today, Gordon. They did. Q 
Drew Mag McGainey is, is continuing his, his strike fest. Let's see what Eric, Eric Calvin Thomas does the second ball. Oh, he leaves the 10 pin. So Mr. Thomas goes out with 224. Let's see if Kevin Head gets another strike here. If he does, that'll be him 248 to, two, to 651 with their anchor man on, on a double. This could really change the fortune for Outrage. The scratch pair won the game. Mm. Mr. Head threw a seven count the last 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 uh, ball in the 10th frame. So now they're, only, they're down by six pins, I believe. The question at this point is, will Mr. Wilds throw the strike? He's going to have to throw it, all three strikes. That's one. Pulling is up. If he goes out, they win. It's that simple. This next ball will, will put him ahead of the, in, the, in the matchup. Correct. First ball gives him the lead. When we're done with this, I'll do a recap. Regardless of what happens, it is not looking good for Outrage. Outrage needs on, the, on this first team handicap, needs to win this game to stay relevant no matter what happens from a scoring standpoint. I do not disagree with you. They got to get at least four. Jonathan Boland just threw another strike. Eric Wiles threw a strike here. Watch this Lee Bowling to throw another one. This is going back and forth. Yep. I'm not going to say anything, uh, Gordon. Don't you say anything either. I don't know what you're talking about. Say what? <laughs> I'm a little mouse. Come on, you. Oh. 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 But I will say this, if he takes his jersey off right now, if he takes a shot, Tom Twist is right there. We can see it coming. <laughs> Get ready. No shirt off. No, Outrage wins. Outrage wins a nail biter. But it wasn't, it wasn't big enough no. to cut into the lead. Correct. They're going to lose on the wood. G-Town, even though they lost two games, they're going to add on the wood. And that is the important thing. Well, we didn't expect a shutout. UBA Bowlers for $25 on an orange ticket. 054288. Outrage was up 15 pins, won 15 points on the on the scratch pair. They won 18 points. I'm going to give you an exact number momentarily. All right. While we're doing that, what's going on handicap there too? Well, both teams are pretty much even. Nothing has changed in terms of the handicap. Tracy and Samantha are really are bowling head. They're really bowling outstanding. They're really leading their team to to in terms of overall performance. The question is, is who's going blank? Well, it's not even who's going to blank right now. I'll explain momentarily. Two. 
All right, here's what we got. Right, right now it is 8-4, G-Town. Scratch, 18-pen lead for G-Town. Obviously, G-Town's got the wooden all three. G-Town has the wooden all three. Looks like here, the difference was 18 pins. After two games. After two games. 18. 18. Uh, 30, 50, what's it? 51. 51. 166. 166. That is. Yeah. <laughs> 235 on the wood. G Town is up 235 sticks. Now, is that impossible to come back off from? That is unofficial after two. Unofficial, of course, but is that impossible to come back on nope, for? Nope, it's not outrage? impossible, but Outrage has got a lot of work to do. Yeah, but if you, if you, it's 235 plus the handicap from both pairs. Correct. So that might be impossible to come back from in order to get total work. Not, not at all, but they need Outrage to throw a lot of strikes and G Town to throw a lot of opens. And right now they're getting that. So in all honesty. All right, 227. Officially 227, which is still a lot. So if, if that's the case, if you add in the handicap on both for first yeah, and second well, handicap. Wait, wait, you're not going to look at that because that's not going to do that in terms no, of scratch. Just so you're really gonna, yeah, exactly. Game. Yeah. So it'd be 283 that they would have to overcome. No. Because again, it is difference in terms of the games in the set. I see what you're saying, but it's not going to be set up. Okay. So now two, three, five, two, two, seven, magic number. Let's say. Either way, it is a lot of pens. That opens. Looks like the scratch pair for uh, G Town is is not coming out with a vengeance. My brother, my man. You a pro, boy. You a pro. If you're outraged, you need to do, and that's what's right. Well, if the games Jack are close. Jack right now with the triple holding on. Again, they don't need to win. They just need to not lose by 227. Right. They still, mm, let me think here, Gordon. Is it possible that this could end up in a, in a tie? Of course, but. You want to explain that? And a that? big but here. Uh, it could, it probably won't. The question is the wood. That is the question. Okay, let's look at it this way. G-Town is up by 227. In terms of wins, they have saved mysteriously. They, they self-destruct. In, in, other, in other words, in order to have a tie, Right. Because right now, G-Town's up 8-4. They need to win one game uh, and then lose would, they, all three series. Right. They would need to lose all three pairs. And then get the and then get the one. So mathematically, no, it's impossible. However, if you're looking for a melt, let's look over here. Scratch pair. Scratch pair right now. Uh, Brandon Haney needs a GPS. And here comes outrage. Here. <laughs> like Samantha has started off with three in a row on the second team handicap. Tracy Bowling has a, a, a split in the second frame, so let's see what happens. Ethan Griffin continues with his strike fest. He has two in a row. Mr. Hahn has back-to-back -back, uh, nine spares, so let's see what happens on the second team. And this, this game will be won. Focus on scratch right now. Outrage is up potentially by 40 plus. That's what they need to do in all three pairs. That's why I'm looking at the other two pairs. Because the question is, 
who's going to be able to make a difference. Big shot by Ness. Big shot by Ness. Hugh McGaney's got a counter. Jack Ness and Hugh McGaney have had a nice strike fest going back and back with each other. He's a strike. He'll get it. Let me ask you a question, Gordon. What would you consider a blowout? If a team wins by how many pins? I'd say over 300. Over oh, three. Over right. 300? Yeah. Okay. Right now, they're up by 227 sticks. G-Town is. But they haven't closed the door yet. They're, they're playing. They're playing tentative, or they're playing not to lose. Yep, and you can't do that because here comes outrage. Calvin Thomas third right now. Yep. <laughs> cannot play scared. You cannot play scared. You got to let it all hang out at this point. Brandon Haney needs to start putting it together. His other teammates are striking. But he's either had an open, a split, 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 or he needs to be. He needs to make the uh, change, a ball change, for the transition because he's not. He's not. Uh, he hasn't hit a strike yet. Here comes outrage. Here comes outrage on the scratch pair, and on first handicap. The question is, can do one second handicap? That is a question. Second handicap. What can the handicap teams do? As long as they don't get blown out. <laughs> Mr. Haney just threw a strike. Welcome to the game, sir. He needs more of them. Yes, he does. But even with his mishaps, the question is going to become, how does G-Town break, uh, eat into their lead? Well, G-Town's got to build on the handicap second pair. If they can do what they've been doing the first two games, they will win. And they may need to because here comes outrage. Outrage is turning it around. Outrage now oh, up by on the 50. scratch bear. Outrage now up by at least 50, looking for more. Uh oh. Jonathan Bowling just missed it. Was that the 10 pin? Yep, and Outrage is now taking lead handicap one. Michael Shook with a nine count. Mr. Hess almost picked up a split. Well, he almost picked up the split. That's a hard split to pick up. Outrage up by 72. G-Town needs to continue with the handicap side. Handicap two. All right, looking at on the second team handicap, Ray Smarts has a nine in the fourth frame. Now Ray Smarts, he, he's not starting off like he did the last game. That's going to be huge because uh, Ethan Griffin is is on a four on a four backer to begin the set, the third 279, and final game. Two seventy nine, two seventy nine. Ethan Griffin. Whew, he's bowling his head off. Nobody he might throw an eight hundred series today. MVP. Remember we talked about before, not how you start, but how you finish. Well, they started strong. <laughs> they started strong. Right, 
Uh oh, Mr. Mr. Bennett just on the scratch pair. Mr. Bennett just missed another seven pin. That allows that allows that uh, lead to come Can back. And G Town starts. Mr. Eric Walsh. Mr. Thomas on the first scene handicap with a double. Let's see what Mr. Kevin Head does. He needs to get a strike here to get the, get the, get the match rolling for him for his team. That's a nasty nine count, but at least he got nine. Mr. Richard Jerome Jr. just has with a starts off with the last and final game with a six count, so that's good. Let's see what Jack Ness does coming back off of a split. Eric Wallace with three in a row to start the last and final game. Kevin Head missed a single pin. Mr. Jonathan Bowler in the third frame, he throws a, a strike here. So now the question is going. <laughs> Mr. Ethan, Mr. Ethan Griffin just threw another strike. He has five in a row to start the third game. His team has opened up at least a uh, 40 pin lead on almost a, a 50 pin lead. Uh oh. Ethan Shook just had a four, a four, uh, uh, and and here's a split. Average, <laughs> average up by ninety over there. They're up by almost hundred, almost hundred sticks on the scratch pair. Let me ask you a question, Gordon. Looks like. Uh, G Town is beginning to uh, self destruct. They're getting mm -hmm. they're getting splits. Yep. They're getting spares. Yep. Where at, at this point, uh, outrage on the scratch pair is beginning to strike on a regular basis. Mr. Richard Jerome just threw another strike. He has uh, one, two, three. He has seven in a row. The question is, can they hold off? Yep, that is the question. Because it looks like to me, on the scratch pair, they're over now. Well, you also have two people that bowled. I got no pin. Yes. Key's gonna be there. Which that, pair? That 13, 13 handicap. Yep, handicap two. That is your key. Well, Mr. H James Hahn has to get back on, and he has to just at least give spares while his other two uh, teammates hold him up. Because outrage is more, is more than capable of coming in and winning. 226, 227 yep. sticks is hard to come back on, but it's not impossible. Like you said, Murder Inc. did it last year to win the title. Our age is going to be up by possibly 100. Right over here. Brandon Haney just threw another strike. He threw a turkey, so that keeps his team at least close from being 100 down. Yes. Look at the marks. Once again, we discussed it's not how you start, it's how you finish. If they finish strong, they'll win this match without an issue. That's true, but they need to finish strong. But one of their pairs has to win a game. Yep. Well, no, they don't. They just got to hold on to the wood. Because right now they have eight. If they win the wood, that's another 10. That's 18. And with that, they're going to have to have a series. 24. So they're 22, 18. Right. And who would get it? Who would get 22? They need to win one pair.
You said they won eight games. If they win ten, that's eighteen. If they don't win anything, any other game, that's, that's twenty-two. Can you, you forget? What is four? So I forget the overall one. They're guaranteed to win the series for one one. That's four. That's twenty-two points. That's good for the win. Try this again. G Town is eight. Right. If they win the overall wood, it's ten for eighteen. Right. That's if eighteen. If they win points. the overall wood, that also means they win a series for four points. So they get twenty-two. So they win. Okay, you're right. Thank you. You're right. You're right, sir. You're right. I love you, Malachi. You're right. Your math is well. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I didn't factor in the overall points on each pair. So if G-Town wins the wood, they win the match. Let me ask you a question. How many pins are G-Town up on the scratch pair? Doesn't matter. Okay. I'm just thinking of different and scenarios in which they can protect. Wood, there's right. only one scenario. I got you. I'm slogging off here till the end, but I'm gonna do this until my voice falls off. Looks like Richard Jerome is, is 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 working on a 300 game right now. Let's see what he does in the, in the eighth frame. Big but, shot. Mr. Big Haney shot. has turned it around. Yes. That's big for his team right there. Oh shit. Okay. Michael Shook leaves a 10 pin. Outreach is doing what they need to do on the scratch. And the first handicap, however, there's a big gap on the wood. And more importantly, handicap two, G-Town is winning. If they win, it is going to be over. And they're pouring on their And then on, they on are pouring it on the handicap two. Griffin, Griffin again, 279, 279. Wow. Front five. I would love to see him get a 300 this game. Tracy Bolins have the, the game of her, or the series of her life. To bowl like this in a championship game is something that you'll always think about as you continue to bowl. Yes, I agree. He's definitely uh, Ethan Griffin should be the MVP of this whole, of, of at least this game here of this uh, series today. But I would say honorable mention would it would be Tracy Bolin with her 208 average, and as well as Jack Ness for what they did the first two games. Yeah, I look at all the damage that they've done. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. At this point, it takes a team effort to, to, to win. And let's look at here. Well, they, they don't, I don't think that they're going to give up that lead on the scratch pair. Uh, Outrage looks like they're going to win the scratch pair. Yeah, but they're not going to win by enough. No, that's true. They're not going to win by enough to come to the two. And then whatever they gain, they're going to lose. Exactly. And that's the guy you wanted to replace. That is the guy <laughs> yesterday that you wanted to replace today. You know what? And I, that I, is why you don't do it. You're right. You're right, Gordon. You're right. You're right. I can't say anything. I usually am. Not always, but I usually am. Yeah. 
It's getting closer and closer on that first team handicap. It's going to be see. It's going to the question is whoever blinks, that could be the difference of who who wins that pair. True, but again, the the overall factor is overall one. Outrage is doing what they need to do, but they're not doing enough, and that is the key. Well, they needed to do that in the second game, not, they sure not, did. not just You're the third game. You're absolutely right. They absolutely needed to do that in game two and not in game three. They needed to win game two at least by 100 pins to give them a chance. Yes, sir. That is exactly what they needed to do. Instead, G-Town went up 33 pins. I would like to welcome back my voice for the rest of this commentary. Yeah, I hope it stays. Apparently, it's returned. <laughs> All right, Hannah. Scores right now is score is 8-4 G-Town. Overall wood is 227. That is what Outrage needs to make up. They are close to making half of that up on the scratch. They're making a little bit of it up on the handicap. Their problem is handicap two, where G-Town is smacking down Outrage. Eddie Griffin, who, Ethan Griffin, I'm sorry, Ethan Griffin, who I think should be the MVP. 279, 279, front six in game three. And right now, Ethan is carrying and carrying G-Town to the win here. That second team is always a handicapped team that can win it all for you. Right now, there's a lot of silence because regardless of what happens, you would need, and, and we may be focusing on handicap, and G-Town doesn't really want us to focus on the handicap because if we're focusing on the handicap, that means it's starting to get close. Right now, handicap two, it is not close. G-Town does not need to win. They just need to keep it close. And again, I know that Malachi was asking this, but I'll explain why they don't need to win any games. Right now, they've got eight. I think if the overall wood is it's 18, if they, if they overall would, they're going to at least win one series. That is 22. That's four points. That is good enough to win. I want to see. The, I, I would just love for a, for this match to get down to the wire. That would be so interesting. You know what? It would be fun to do it. But, but for that to happen... You, you need a little bit of magic over on lane 17 and 18. Now let, and let's same on 15 and 16. Again, Outrage is doing what they need to do. It's going to be down. And again, G-Town can't be too careful here. I mean, they can't be too partying here. Well, look on a first team handicap, Gordon. They're up by now. It's, it's starting to get closer. It's starting again, to get closer now, and closer. Except, look at what... G Town is doing on that third hand on the uh, on the third pair in the second third, handicap. Second pair. team handicap, you're right. Yes, sir. That, and, and that, that may and, that and, may be what keeps enables them to win the whole match. If G Town wins, that's why. And again, Ethan Griffin, 279, 279, and now front six. That is correct. Looking for seven. Race Marsh with oh, that's the wrong double, 710. <laughs> and I would rather see a G Town win to avoid having a cranky husband back home tonight. <laughs> That's great. Uh, right now, you're getting what you want. I don't know who your husband is, but if, if it's Ethan Griffin, he's got the front seven, you'll be a very happy camper. That is correct. Jonathan Bowling for a strike. He needs a strike just to keep the match close. Yeah, well, again. Outreach has got work to do. They've got to make up the wood. Well, with Michael Shook having an uh, open in the, in the uh, sixth frame, and Outrage on th all th strikes in the in the uh, in that frame, let's see if they can build on it. This match may not be over, Gordon. Uh, this match is definitely not going to be over. But right now, it's G Town's got to G Town's got to uh, do what they need to do to hold on and got to make up with what's losing over here. That first handicap pair is now looking very, very interesting. Yes, it is. But that's being counteracted by what G Town's 
uh, team is doing on the second team handicap. They're at now, least keeping as a, it. As of right now, you're right. Let's see if it stays like that. That's true. that is very close right now. You're right. Let's focus over on scratch. Both bulls on fills. And just keep in mind, now both anchormen on the second team handicap has, has have the opportunity to throw spares. Let's see if they can finish the job. Uh-oh. Mr. Hahn just there, had a chop. Hahn. Jason Howard now has got the shot. He has to pick up his pin. Problem is, though, and now all of a sudden G-Town's got more wood on that handicap pair. Whatever they do, and right now, Outrage, first of all, Outrage has got to win those first two by more than 227 because if they're trailing on the second handicap, they've got to buffer it. Yes. Right now, they are not up by 227. No, that they're being not. said, there's four frames left on the handicap one, and they're all starting to strike. And anything oh, can happen. Oh, big strike. Big strike from uh, Michael, Michael Shook. Shook. That stopped the bleeding, Gordon. The question now becomes for, for outrage is can they win by 100 pins at least on the scratch pair? They have to win by 100 plus. Right now they're only up by 80, 80 uh, pins. Right now without uh, Mr. Richard Jerome closing the spare. Brandy right Katie. now, that's every, every 10 pins that G-Town gets, it's padding their lead. It doesn't matter where they, where they get it from as long as they get it. That is correct, sir. Richard Drum right now makes a spare, gives him another 10. Again, Outrage is going to win, but they had a chance to win by over 100. Does not look like that is going to happen unless Hugh goes out and Jack Ness makes a mistake. He would need a split. Mr. Calvin Thomas just missed an uh, easy 10 pin. Guess it wasn't so easy. <laughs> Anna, that's great. Anna, he'll be cranky either way. Oh, no. All right, now going in, the score is uh, G-Town is up 8-4. to four. The question becomes the overall wood. Whoever wins that is going to win the Wilder Cup. Right now it is 227 in favor of G-Town. However, Outrage is starting to make a run. Only on the, only on the uh, scratch well, pair. They're making a run on the scratch pair in the first handicap, second handicap. Here we go, Ethan Griffin, front seven. Now remember with Calvin Thomas's uh, missed out of the 10-pin in the seventh frame, that puts more pressure on Mr. Wiles to throw a strike. Absolutely right. That was a big, that was a big what the heck was that by Lee Bolin. <laughs> a strike is a strike. Jonathan Lee Bolin. Doesn't matter how pretty it is. It does not. And there's a huge shot by Ness, keeping the wood down. Again, if you're G-Town, you don't need to win. You just cannot lose by more than 227. Uh-oh. Mr. Thomas, Mr. And Eric now, Wallace and, just threw well, a Eric split. Well, Eric Wallace is there. Mr. That's Eric Wallace just threw a split. Yeah, that's not going to help Outrage. No, that's going to that's gonna enable or maybe even embolden G-Town to come back with us. That will enable Outrage. That's your MVP Ronnie, right Eddie, there. Ethan Griffin. He's your MVP. He, had to, he tried a 300 twice, so he may get it this time. I hope he does. That would be a nice uh, cap for the, for the series for today. And, and you're right on that. A disaster frame for Outrage, the first handicap. They needed, to, they needed to make a, a headway, and they're not making a headway now. Well, they, they need to win by more than 30. And right now it's not even that because – they're down 42. They're only up by 10. That's not good enough. That's they need not, to win by a lot more than that. That is correct. Mr. McGainey needed a, a a strike there. He got a nine count. Yeah, and the window of opportunity for outrage is slowly shutting down. Yes, it is. The door is slowly shutting. Shot by Jack Ness. He's going to finish it out with a 240. Well, 
they had the opportunity to win win by 100. Now it looks like they may end up winning by 40 or, or 50 point yeah. pins. That's well, not enough. 100 would have been fantastic. That, that would have been a great lead, especially since you had three or four frames left on handicap one. Yes. 40 means now handicaps got to win by, oh, 120, 130. That's not happening. Even more than that. And that you're right. And it looks like on handicap one that uh, G-Town is surging to try to win that win this last game. They had three more frames, well, two more frames left to win to, win, to, to take over the match. So let's see what happens. So Outrage is going to win the game. They're going to win the series wood. So Outrage on scratch is going to win eight. Uh, they're going to win. I don't know yet. We still got one more bullet to okay. go. Okay. But, but again, and, like and even with Samantha there, they're, 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 well, it's around 59 pins. However, uh, Outrage is running out of frames. Even if they, you have a late spark, they're running out of frames. That is correct. And that is a big hit by Kevin Head. Mr. Head is making it so making it tougher on the first team handicap. Absolutely. They may they may end up turning this around. Jimmy Gaines Jr. No. 247. Great series for him. Great series for the scratch. I mean, look at the numbers that they've been putting up there. 740, 707, 730. They'll take eight points. However, one of the things that we discussed was scratch versus handicap. What would be stronger? And the answer is right now the handicap of G Town. That is correct. When you're giving up 20, more than 20 pins in a championship match, that in a close match, that's real tough. So I'm gonna get the final unofficial on scratch, or the final official on scratch. Lee Bowen again, just stay out of trouble. Really, you can lose by 40 pins. That's not a big deal. That's Especially true. Especially when you have that, you just don't want to lose by a lot more than that. And more importantly, handicap two is up. Ethan Griffin, front eight, looking for nine. When you're going up against a guy, I mean, Ray Smarts is a great bowler. But when you're going up against a guy who's looking at bowling potentially 300, and he's bowled two 279 back to back. Shot looks good. Ooh. I think I jinxed him, old Gordon. You did. You did. Good job, Malachi. <laughs> My bad. You were supposed to be the light cloud. I know. You were supposed to be the good, fluffy cloud that was supposed <laughs> to wreck the dark cloud. I got corrupted, man. Yeah, I, I corrupted you. <laughs> a good cloud being corrupted by the dark cloud. Dun, dun, dun. Well, let's see what happens. Um, see if he can pick up the spare. Ah, uh, I doubt it. But still, great one by Griffin. And, and again, he's got a shot at 800. Yes, he does. I got to figure it out what exactly he needs to get to 800. He's got 279. Ooh, he almost put me wrong there. So that would be, what, 236? He can go out with a 266 if he strikes that, out. That'll get him 800. That, that would give him right 800. Let me, let me find out the exact number here. Uh oh. All right, magic number is 242 for the 800. So okay. he's got, assuming that he doesn't screw this up, he's got it. Well, let's look at it this way. On the first team handicap, I'm looking at G-Town potentially overtaking Outrage. That means that Outrage on this, on, this last, on this last game would have only taken one, one pair. Yeah, I, it, I was going to say, it doesn't matter there. I think what's more impressive is the scoring. Yes. Because right now, the way that everything's going to look, out, Outrage is going to score 10 points, and both the team that won it last year and the team that, that won it two years ago are go both, neither of them are going to win this year because this year goes to G-Town Smackdown. Smackdown. Right now, 30-10 G-Town, G -Town, and that looks like that's how it's going to be. And again, I, I if there's an MVP award, I would give it to Eddie Griffin. Yes. I'm sorry, not I keep calling him that. It's not Ethan, Ethan Griffin. Griffin. Honorable mention Griffin, be Tracy Bowling. 279, 279. Whatever he finishes with in game three, it will be over an 800 series. That is correct. And we all know it's very difficult to throw an 800 no matter when. Well, throwing the 800 on the grandest stage of them all in UBA, that's pretty darn good. That is correct. Yeah, Brad Cummings, they can lose by 115, it won't matter. They can lose by 200, it won't matter. But they won't lose by 200 but it well, still won't matter. 
Well, yeah, you're right. But, well, I don't know, Gordon, because it looks like here on the first team handicap, they might oh, be able to take the lead. Stop. They well, might yes, be able to take, take the, lead. the lead, but not by 220 pence. Well, it won't be about – no, 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 no. I'm not saying uh, outrage. I'm talking about that uh, G Talent will – will defend what they lost on the first team on their scratch pair. Yeah, but it don't matter. They, they have two it, open they have two opens on the Yeah, there. but it, it still won't matter. It doesn't matter overall, but it does but not matter. You just want to at least maintain the 227 uh It does point not lead. matter. As long as they are win by one. I understand what you're saying, but as a team, it does not matter. You want to be able to say that I, I you won you, by. I love you, Malachi. No, I'm just it does saying, not. I, I, it means you know, it you know means something to me. What it would care with me about? What's that? What cares with me is I get a trophy, I hold it up, and I go, "Yay, I won this." I don't care by how much I won it. I don't care by how many points I won it. And you're talking to somebody that's won 28 league titles, and oh, by the way, three uh, Northeast New Jersey district banners. Nobody remembers. You're right. How many points right. we won it by? You're right. All I remember is, oh wait, I've got some banners and I got a lot of hardware. And I'm not saying that you're not right. What I'm saying is just from a, a moral and as well as for team history standpoint. Oh, I standpoint, don't care about that. I do. I, I'm glad you do. Thank you, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure. I'm sure G Town will be the only team that cares about that because I'm sure you cannot tell me the final score of any of the other battle bowls. I'm not going to say you I'm not going to disagree with you. There you go. But at the end of the day, it is about the Wilder Trophy and the Wilder Trophy is going to go to G-Town. G-Town's already won this match already. It's it's all over about the crying. And unless they change the A unless they change the structure or B unless it turns into a mass beach party and everybody wants to take off their jerseys. And even at that point, I'm not sure it matters. Well, the honorable mention, uh, the MVP, Tracy Bolin, she can go out for two. Oh, Tracy Bolin had a great series Shit. also. What was her first two games, Gordon? I'll, I'll, I will say this. If Eddie didn't shoot an 800, I would definitely agree with you on that. 257, 235. So to slow the pace down in the last game, but still almost a 700 series, uh, almost 100 pins she, over series average. Yes, uh, she can go out with a 226. 226. Uh, if she goes out 226, uh, that would be a 700 series. Yes, that would be a 700. Yeah, I, which I, you is know huge. what? I would absolutely do that. Honorable mention, Tracy Bowler. Yes. Absolutely. It took a complete team effort to win this game. Oh yeah. Well, one of the things I said yesterday, you got to play nine against Outrage to win. That is what G-Town did. They played nine. And and G-Town's going to continue here. What is the, what is the finish, Sean? Uh, what is the finish with? 225. 225. Let's see what that is. Let's see what Mr. Ethan finishes with. He's had an amazing day today. Let's see if he can get his 800 yeah, series. Yeah, Tracy Bowen, 717 series. Whew. That's outstanding for a 208 bowler. That is outstanding. 208 bowler, but Ethan Griffin, 222 average, going to uh, finish out with an 800. That is that, amazing. That's very impressive. For very anybody. impressive. Yes, exactly. For anybody with 30 grand on the line at Battle Bowl, that is amazing. That is correct. And behind us, uh, watching Tynell Tate, the CEO of the UBA. Are you liking what you're seeing, Tynell? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, I, I love it, man. It's, I mean, Listen, the, the underdogs is, is no. There's never no pressure on outrage, you know, because they've been here before, you know. So I actually the pressure was on was on outrage because everyone's expecting them to win. So um, it's usually the underdogs, they 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 are the most hungry, and um, you know they 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 came through through the clutch and they every shot they grinded out. The the team spirit was uh was wonderful, and um, they got the job done. Thank you, Tanel. Tanel agrees with me that the pressure was more on outrage than for G Town. G Town had never been here before, so they had nothing to lose. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of people. A lot of money was on outrage. Uh, uh, they've been here before. You know, the Brawl Championship they just won a few days ago. So, um, you know, like I said, uh, the pressure was on them because you know they're supposed to win on paper, but. Uh, you know, it's anybody's game all the time. It's never, there's never no guarantees in bowling. I agree, but the brain did predict that G Town will win today. You did, you did indeed. 
But, but then again, yeah, you, I, you I always like to predict the upsets there. At yeah, I didn't, I didn't make any predictions. But look, every, everybody always wants the underdogs to win. You want to see everyone win. You know, sometimes it gets boring seeing the same teams win, you know. I agree with Tynell, but I went off the numbers this time. I looked at what they did the last the last against uh, Murder, Inc., and they, they pretty much beat them down like they stole their money, their candy or something. Yeah, well, Murder, Murder Inc. didn't really bowl great as a team, so um, there was really no pressure. So they pretty much freewheeled and, and didn't really um, didn't really have much to bowl for. And G-Town is saying what I said earlier. Ethan Griffin, definitely an MVP. Yes, he is. Definitely turned around his game from yesterday. Well-deserved. Well-deserved series. It'll be an eight. I'm trying to get the exact number. What did he shoot? He shot three? 256. 256. Would I give him an 800 series? Oh, sure. Well, he needed 242 to get an 800. Okay. So that's going to be 814. Mr. Ethan Griffin shot an 814 series. Tracy Bowling shot, what's she shoot? 717. 717. I mean, that, that is the reason why G-Town won was second handicap. That is correct. They led the way today. Yesterday, the, uh, the first team handicap led the way. So it was a total team effort coming into today's uh, match. Well-deserved win. All right, Lee, Lee, Lee Bowen with the strike. I want to get him and I want to get... Um, Let's see if Jonathan Bowling can pick up uh, another strike here. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna go for the tie. I think Tom Twist is going to go with the official presentation. Deserve win by G Town. Tracy Bowling with a 707 series. Ethan Griffin with an 810 series. Firstly, I want to give a big shout out to Todd McGee. Another 806, another 300 out of board. Underdog pulled it out, sir. Underdog pulled it out. Yes, it did. I, I actually. I'm getting there. Predicted Calm down. Calm down. I also want to throw another shout out to Miss Tracy Bowling. You had them out. 707. What did you shoot yesterday, Tracy? Oh, I did, I did. But we didn't, but after that, I said, oh, that's 180. But, what did you shoot yesterday, Tracy? The MVP this year. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. The MVP award goes to Miss Ethan Griffin. That's a hard one. Yesterday, you know, he wore a game for uh, Kamar Punk Wilder. He 
go wild over what here. Every year it's given out to the world champion. This year's world champions, congratulations, G Town Heavy Heroes. Great ball on everybody. Same thing for, for two reasons, because I know yesterday, because I was there, as you know, I did the commentary in the match with you guys defeating Exit Wounds, congratulations on that. Both of you were a little bit disappointed and frustrated, and if I put a car out there and said, would you like to run yourselves over with it, you may have wanted to have done that. And, and, and I know because I also commented on your Vixens match. Today you turned it around fantastically. I would say I would make an argument that you guys are the reason why you currently have the Wild Trump trophy. You've got that, and you shot a 17, 717 series. You shot an 814 series. Yeah, I do the numbers though. So first of all, congratulations on winning everything on this. Second of all, talk to me what was going through your mind last night and then how you turned it around today. So when I got back to my hotel room, I laid down. I, I wasn't feeling good at all. I really was not feeling good at all. I had a lot of doubt. And I said, you know what, if I can keep it in play, things are going to come our way. And that's exactly what I did. I got up there with a blank mind. I had TV static going through, and I just threw the ball. Now, I would say, I would argue, again, that you two really led the team, really motivated everybody, moved everybody across. Now, not only did you shoot, I think, what, a 529 the first set yesterday? 529 yesterday, yes. Had yeah. a very good match yes. against Northeast Fixed and Champion, yes. Kelsey Hammond. Yep. Uh, I know that, obviously, I come, come to the match. I know. You fell a little bit short. Mm -hmm. You were sitting down there crumpling a heap after the match. What was, again, I'll ask the same thing. What was going through your mind then? What's going on now? Well, going through my mind then, it was just, there was a lot of, I felt a lot of weight on my shoulders. And just there were so many emotions yesterday with everything that happened and how, how poorly I performed and I didn't want to let my team down. Um, you know, it was just, I can't, and I felt like I let the South down, even though a lot of people commented back to me, like, you didn't let us down, you know, you were there for us, you know, you got other things you got to worry about. So, um, you know, went back to the hotel and slept and slept in for once this weekend um, and was able to get a good night's rest. and. Got up, came in here with the mindset of I'm just going to make great shots and leave it all out on the lanes. I'm going to be real quick for both of you because I know they want to do more stuff over there. What does winning this mean to you? Everything. I came in on this team this year as a newbie. This is family. This is everything. Tracy, final thoughts. I know for you this is family and more than, for more than one reason. Yeah, this, this means this is what we've set our season out for. You know, in September when we start, we're, this is our end goal. This is our Super Bowl. And for us to win it and bring the trophy back to the South, especially with everybody that didn't think that we were going to make it, it just, like, they just kept doubting us. Just keep sleeping on us. And we proved them wrong. So this is just amazing. It's an amazing feeling, and it's going to be an amazing feeling for a while. All right. I'll end it with this one more time. G-Town. SmackDown. That's it. Congratulations to both of you. Congratulations. Well, this is it. I'm going to let them party. Congratulations. Well. Do I have to come over and talk to more of you? I will. My 6-0 contributed heavily, so keep that in mind. Your 6-0 and uh, Lee keeping his jersey on. They're still MVP to your jersey. And Lee keeping his jersey on. I kept my jersey on the whole time. Of course, I didn't strike a whole lot but game one. So. I think you need to take it off. <laughs> I'm probably going to wind up taking it off here in just a second. Off, you know? Anything can happen. If anybody wants to take off their shirt, you can do it now. <laughs> On, on that note, congratulations to G-Town Heavy Headers. 
I'm not really sure I want to see this. Congratulations to G10 Evanders. I got one more interview, and I'd love to talk to you about it if you got a second. Got no, no, bring that with you. How does it feel holding that? Surreal. We've worked hard. I mean, it's, I'm lost. We worked so hard all year. We uh, won the district on the very last week, position round, went into the playoffs, bowled well, came together, and this is, this is, I mean, this is it. You know, this is what we came here to do. I hope to be back next year. Outrage is a top-notch team. I wish them nothing but the best from here going forward. Yes, you are. Absolutely. And, and, and I, know, I, I know that you follow what I write, and what I wrote was that you guys are the hottest team coming into the playoffs. And, and going in on Cap Tag, if you remember, we hung out together last night as well. What does doing that in the WCS, how does that help you win this? Uh, well, it gave us it gave us some experience on this side of the bowling center. Mm -hmm. So this bowling center, this side plays different than that side. The approachers are more tacky. Uh, they, to me, they were they were a little slick today on the lanes, a little tight. But you know, it, it's my teammates, man. It's I, you couldn't have done it without them. I mean, it, I, that's all I can say. You know, we are a team. We are a team. There you go. And, and I know you got more stuff to do. I don't want to keep you too long. Any last thoughts, last words, any shout outs, anything you want to say? UBA, we appreciate everything y'all do for us. Uh, Queen City District for being behind us 100%. All the people down in the South, we appreciate y'all. Championships coming back to the South, guys. Sure is. Championship there. A lot of stuff coming to the South. Congratulations. Hey, can we get a G-Tail smack? Absolutely. One, two, three. G-Tail!